The bulk annuity market is essentially a market within which the trustees of defined benefit pension schemes seek to de-risk some of the risks in those schemes. And they're typically things like longevity risk, inflation risk, investment risk. And they do so via investing in an insurance policy with an insurance company. Uh, we touched on in the presentation about the development of this market since it really grew from about 2006 when new competitors started to enter. Uh, so in 2008, we saw premiums of around about 8 billion. They'd grown to annual premiums of around, um, in 2013, around uh, 14 billion. Uh, and we expect to see 2050 to be about 11 billion. Uh, in terms of the number of insurers actively operating in this market, we think there are about 10 insurers right in business at the moment. And of course, we'd expect to see new entrants in the months and years to come. In the UK, there are 6,000 defined benefit pension schemes, and each of them is unique. Whilst every bulk annuity policy offers the same de-risking qualities, the road to the, that end goal can vary wildly. In our presentation, we covered off three innovations. The first of this was no floor pension increases. Here, under the buy-in phase of the bulk annuity policy, should inflation turn negative, then the pensions paid will actually decrease. This mismatch between the pensions that the trustees need to pay the members and the insurance policy can have potentially attractive pricing implications. The second is an asset lock. Now an asset lock means that an insurer agrees that for a limited point period before transaction that the premium will move in line with a pre-agreed basket of assets. What this means is that the trustees um, avoid any potential divergence between the premium and the group of assets that they've earmarked for the policy. The third was a all risks policy. Now under an all risks policy, the trustees don't have to pay any true up premium after the data cleansing period shortly after transaction. This means that the insurer is on the hook for any potential costs such as missing beneficiaries or the cost of a GMP equalisation exercise. This gives the trustees greater price certainty, but of course does come at a cost. A medically underwritten bulk annuity, or, or the term that's used in the market commonly is MUBAR, is actually very, very similar to a traditional bulk annuity. Uh, and we covered in our presentation how it differs. And it's really just a type of bulk annuity. The small difference is the collection of a small amount of additional health and lifestyle data from the membership to be insured. Now there's a very swift, efficient process that has been established in the market for the collection of this data. And that really contributes to the quite impressive response rates that we've seen and that we, we touched on in the presentation. And response rates, really that's just the percentage of people who we ask for data that actually respond. The real beauty of the MUBAR though is in the pricing and that's where we see it. Uh, and what happens is that because the insurer gets slightly more data, they've got more confidence in their pricing and that confidence manifests itself in the actual price of the underlying bulk annuity. So in other words, because we've got that additional data, the underlying bulk annuity is cheaper. Of course, uh, we also touched on the Pension Institute report that was published in January of this year. Uh, and, and in that report, one commentator suggested that MUBAR pricing is actually better than the best traditional bulk annuity pricing. Well, well first of all, this is a very specialist area uh, within which uh, there's a very, very important role for the professional advisors, uh, whether they be actuarial, legal or investment advisors. Uh, so the first message would really be that it's, it's, a, it's an advised purchase process. The second message really is trustees who are thinking of, a, of embarking on the route to a, a medical underwritten bulk annuity, or indeed a traditional bulk annuity, um, should think about the process that they want to uh, engage. So whether that be a multi-insurer process, or for some of them, they may choose a single exclusive insurer process. And we've increasingly seen over about the last year 
that more and more trustees are becoming comfortable with a single insurer process. What happens is that they engage with that insurer very early on in the process and ultimately get through to transaction with one insurer. Now, each side has its merits, each possible way of doing it has its merits. Um, but we find that the exclusive single insurer process uh, can reduce time and expenses. Uh, and of course, if for some reason the transaction doesn't happen, then the, the trustees can widen their net uh, and include other insurers in that process. The medically underwritten bulk annuity or MUBAR purchase process is virtually identical to that of the traditional bulk annuity purchase process with one key difference, the collection of health and well-being information from a subset of your members. These members are written to with a short health questionnaire and a dozen yes or no questions alongside a covering letter from the trustees which sets out the details of the exercise. A small group of these individuals are then taken forward to a second round of underwriting. This takes the form of a short telephone interview with a trained professional or a permission for a report from their doctor. All of this phase of underwriting data collection is done with the explicit permission of the member and the great news is that the light touch process is really yielding results with an average response rate of between 70 and 80%. In our presentation, we covered three core areas. When, how, and with whom. Firstly, when to approach the market. Here we would encourage trustees to be the right amount of ready. And what we mean here is a huge amount of investment can be put in to ensure that member data is perfect, that affordability has been suitably assessed, and that the sponsor has been suitably involved. However, trustees that strive to be perfectly ready might miss a fantastic pricing opportunity in the market. Second of all, how to approach the market. A theme running through our presentation was one of medically underwritten bulk annuities or MUBARs. So trustees will need to decide whether to approach the market on a medically underwritten or a traditional basis. Another example of a consideration is which members to insure. Trustees with suitable amount of affordability might choose to insure the whole group of current pensioners. Or alternatively, they may look to look at a subset of those current pensioners, the ones with the highest benefit entitlements, and therefore tackling a concentration risk. This is known in the market as top slicing. Finally, with whom to transact, so which insurer. Key considerations here tend to be the cost, their track record, financial stability, the insurer's contract terms, and of course, how easy they are to do business with. Ultimately, the trustees advisors will be able to off offer some very powerful advice around all of these key factors.